Well, I'm here at the Pennsylvania's 102nd Farm Show with Secretary uh, Redding, a Nabs County resident, by the way. Right. And uh, so we're going to have a pretty decent conversation on ag issues. It's great, great to see you. Happy New Year to you. So you and I have had some discussion previously, and we yeah. somewhat disagreed. Actually, I didn't disagree. Uh, the poultry folks disagreed. So you mentioned it this morning. Yes. Uh, so where are we at? with Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture protecting us from yeah. the bird flu, yeah. avian flu or whatever we call it. Right. Well, let, let me let me say a couple of things. One, um, as, as, as a representative, I, I think you, you've done a, an amazing job of representing Adams County. I live there, right? And we all know how, you know, the, the number of pressure points there are from animal agriculture to the fruit industry. And we'll talk about that. And over the course of our work, I mean, you've got an advocacy role and a leadership role within the House to do. Uh, as secretary, I've done the same thing, but I've always appreciated that where there may be points of disagreement, we still have a very civil conversation, right, in the interest of public service, but also in the interest of agriculture, right? And I've really admired you for that. So thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, specific to, you know, the high path, uh, even influenza, you know, we, we started out in the administration two years ago with a real worry with what was playing out around, around the globe and around uh, the United States. Pleased to say here in 2018, as we turn the calendar, that we don't have high path AI in Pennsylvania. There are some challenges around the United States with wild uh, and migrating flock of birds, uh, but not uh, of any consequence, right? We're concerned just because we know the potential there and we're concerned about it, but there's not an issue at this moment. We still have our resources within the department. We still have our laboratory system functioning. We're doing an amazing amount of testing, of active, active testing uh, of, of commercial flocks as well as the wild uh, uh, and migrating birds. Yeah. So I think the avian flu is uh, an import from Asia, right? Yes. So I'm. We have stink bug, emerald ash borer, and spot and lantern fly, which are also imports from Asia. Correct. And you and I have had some discussion yeah. on this. So, uh, particularly our apple growers, and you may not be able to get a good wine from Adams County Winery because they like grapes too. Yeah. I just found out that they like hops. Mm -hmm. So, what, are, what is the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture doing? And again, you talked about that this morning also. So we, yeah. have, we have invasive species, almost all of them, I think, are from Asia or yeah. Asia Minor. Yeah. So how can we stop this thing? Well, I mean, I listen, I've been asked often, I mean, what, what keeps you up at night? I mean, these are the exact issues, right, where uh, we are the recipient of, by no product or design of ours, we have these problems that are significant problems economically. They're, they're significant from a quality of life concern, a commerce concern. Uh, what it reminds me of is two things. One is you need a full partnership between your industry, our federal government, and the Department of Agriculture, and our state, right? To include our land-grant university, we've got the, the Fruit Research Center there, which is a really critical part of this conversation, all those conversations. But you've got to have that funded. You have to have it supported. You've got to have them engaged in it. And, and try to be proactive about it. Uh, secondly, it's on the research side. What we're confronting with uh, you know, the spotted lanternfly, and confronting with the high path AI and, and make your list of invasive problems is you still have to have really good science and research to guide you. So funding those activities, those projects uh, are really important. So most of our fruit growers, and you and I know who they are, yes. uh, had I. IPM in place, yeah. and then with the stink bug, they just decided. Stink. This is 2009. Yes. Mm -hmm. They just decided we're just going to spray, right? Kill everything. Yeah. IPM went out the window. Yes. So what are we kind right. of doing? Because the integrated pest management, which is IPM by the way, yeah, it, it's a good idea. But when we get these huge <laughs> outbreaks, like we did with the stink bug, our fruit growers are going to. They yeah. need to maintain their livelihood. Right. So how do we, is there any way to get around that with a spot and ladder fly or? Well, I think we, we certainly want to continue the, the, uh, in, uh, the, the IPM management approach that, that has proven to be critically important. Uh, I think what we're looking and, and hopefully being able to do with our spotted lanternfly is to have some type of 
uh, control methods that it may be, uh, it may be as I envision, sort of a hybrid, right? There's some things you're going to have to spray and times you have to spray, but hopefully uh, in the life cycle that uh, pest that we can find those that wouldn't be, you know, as, as uh, detrimental. But that's the issue. I mean, I think that's when I talk to the public, this, why are we interested? It's because you have a pest that has major economic impacts, livelihood. I mean, this is not anything that you can say, yeah, it's a nuisance. This is an economic nuisance, and that's a real problem. Yeah. So, different subject. Yeah. So, Adams County was <laughs> the first county to have CWD, yeah. chronic wasting disease. And uh, it's now, we have 67 cases reported, including Blair County. Clearfield County sits right above Blair. Yeah. And that's the southern range today of our elk herd. And if it makes it to the elk herd, mm -hmm. uh, some of our wildlife biologists are yeah. think it'll be devastating. And that falls under your jurisdiction too because you <laughs> have responsibility for our deer farms. Yes. And most of the cases are deer farm cases. So what's the ag doing mm -hmm. to, uh, to combat CWD? If, yeah. if it isn't compatible, well, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, almost as challenging as, as the spotted lanternfly, you know, because it's, it's uh, a real challenge for us. I would say several things. One uh, is that, again, this is one of those issues you've got to work with our Pennsylvania Game Commission in partnership with. Uh, we have uh, uh, 1,200 uh, captive deer farms in Pennsylvania, but you have uh, several million uh, wild deer, right? Um, and, and I've tried to sort of take this position that it's not about, uh, you know, is it wild, is it, is it domestic and captive? It's Pennsylvania. And we've got to figure out uh, if the issue is, you know, the disease and its transmissibility, uh, how do we do that? It takes good protocol at the domestic, at, at the servant level, right, the, the captive level. Uh, and, and that's not something that the deer farmers can play with, right? So they've got to be good about the due diligence on that. At the same time, um, you know, I would hope that the, the Game Commission and, and the hunters would appreciate just the complexities of this, that even our PA producers do all the best job they can do. You have these imports coming to Pennsylvania that make it even more complicated, right? And I think some of our issue has come from out of state that came into the state without the legal process. So uh, a long answer to say it's a challenge for us. We have to keep our eyes on it, try to figure out how do we uh, do the research, do, do, do the active surveillance of it, um, you know, and try to be proactive. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to throw something into your court. Yeah. So what do you think Department of Agriculture would need? I think you need more personnel. That's my opinion. Yeah. But, so where we, if we, if we would take a more aggressive approach, or you would take a more aggressive where would you think funding should, how well, much? On the chronic that? wasting disease? Yeah. yeah, I think there are two areas. One uh, is research, and I think we've got to continue. There's some being done at the University of Pennsylvania Vet School as well as Penn State University, but I think we've got to be really aggressive about that. And two is on the staffing side. You know, this is either you need the animal, animal health diagnosticians or you need veterinarians. This is a science issue, an animal science issue. So having greater surveillance out there would be really important. So. I would strategically place a couple of extra people around the state into those areas uh, to make sure that we're really doing the surveillance uh, and, and be aggressive on the research. Well, thank you. Good. Uh, pl pleasure working and serving with you. <laughs> Thanks for what you've done. Well, I appreciate what you've done. Glad you, to do you it. You have ag in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. appreciate it. Glad to do it. Yeah.